Good morning, New Creation United Methodist Church. Welcome to 2022. Happy New Year to everyone. And I hope everyone have had a great start this year. Let us come to worship today. Today is um, the Epiphany of the Lord on January 2nd, 2022. So there are prayer requests that we have received each week and uh, we continue to uh, look forward to praying for you and being with you in your journey in life. And these are the names of, of the people that have sent the requests to us. Um, and also let us pray, continue to pray for love, peace, joy, and hope for all as we begin the 2022. Keep in prayer those who are struggling with the toll of the COVID pandemic that has taken toll on us mentally and physically. And we want to express our condolences to Lucy Lincoln and family in the loss of her beloved sister, Puneta Smith, Junita Smith as well. Remember the Lord, my God, I call to you for help and you healed me from Psalm 32. Happy birthday to you, to Gloria McCauley on January the 2nd, and also Edward Moon on January the 2nd. Happy wedding anniversary to Mary and Plummer Jones on January the 2nd as well. Noonday Bible study will resume on January the 5th on uh, this year, and every each Wednesday at noon we will continue to meet over soon. We are holding the conference while leadership training workshops uh, virtually on January the 9th from 3 to 4.30 p.m. Um, you can also uh, join in person, but they arrange virtually, and you can register at nccumc.org. There will be a ministry for you to join, um, the Open Table Ministry of Durham requests that um, UMC churches uh, donate new or gently worn used coats, not well worn, but used coats gently through January 17th. You can drop off at the Trinity uh, United Methodist Church in Durham on North Church Street. And um, DCIA, um, which stands for Durham Communications and Actions that uh, our church has been uh, part of for a long time um, in our mission, uh, they are holding an annual banquet. Um, this will be held in person in Durham and it's available virtually um, on Tuesday. Um, I apologize that I mentioned a little about the workshop, tra work, uh, workshop training. It was not in person. This is the one that you can either choose to join in person or virtually. Um, this one is held on Tuesday, January 25th um, from 6 to 8, 15 p.m. And you can RSVP by January 19th, 2022, this week. Please stand if you're able. Let us come to join worship the law together. Arise, shine, your light has come. Darkness covers the earth. Lift up your eyes, look around. Arise, shine, your light has come. Let us pray. God of light and love, shine upon our lives as we welcome the mystery of your love. Guide us toward your true gift, for our hearts long to encounter with the holy. Quiet our expectations, that we might be surprised by the unexpected. Open our eyes, that we might find you in unanticipated places. Shine your light upon us, that we might see you clearly and recognize your face in all people. Amen.
hacerles ver a todos cuáles es la realización de ese designio que Dios, creador de todas las cosas, había mantenido secreto desde la eternidad. De esta manera ahora, por medio de la iglesia, todos los poderes y autoridades en el cielo podrán conocer la salvadura de Dios, que Él muestra en tan variedades formas. Dios hizo, hizo este de acuerdo con el plan eterno que llevó a cabo en Cristo Jesús, nuestro Señor. Y en Cristo tenemos de verdad para acercarnos a Dios con la confianza que nos da nuestra fe en Él. La palabra de Dios para el pueblo de Dios. Gracias a Dios.
all of your smiling faces on this morning. A new year that the Lord has blessed us to see. And so we are very grateful for that, for all that the Lord has done. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Amen. Thank God for his presence here this morning that we have already experienced in the music and the scriptures and on the faces of one another. So we are very grateful <coughs> for the presence of the Lord. Our scripture this morning comes from a familiar passage. Prophet Isaiah in the Old Testament, chapter 60. I'll be reading verses 1 through 6 from the New Revised Standard Version of Scripture. You can follow along with your phones or your own Bibles if you have them with you. And it reads, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around that all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. And they shall bring frankincense and gold, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. From that text this morning, I uh, speak briefly, arise and shine. I want to lift up verse 1 again. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you again for this day, for this new year, for allowing us to come together and worship you in spirit and in truth. And, so, and now, God, we ask that you would open our eyes, our ears, our minds, and our hearts that we might receive what you have for us today. In the name of Jesus, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Rise and shine is a familiar phrase that most, if not all of us, have heard and um, may have said the expression arise and shine is found in several Christian texts written in the mid 17th century. The earliest use of the phrase arise and shine alludes to this passage of scripture that you heard read arise shine for the light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. One of the first non-religious expressions of rise and shine originated as a wake-up call for soldiers. The, the British Army's use of this term has given us this expression for everyday use and suggests that we not just wake up, but be lively and energetic when we arise. When my children were Growing up, I would go into their room each morning before school, open the blinds, and cheerfully cry out, rise and shine, to let them know it was time to get up and get ready for school. Most 
days they did not want to rise or shine. Many of us are like that on Monday mornings. The catchphrase, rise and shine, let us know that it is time to get up, to prepare for something, for work, for school, to start our day. And morning people, if you are one, or know someone that's a morning person, they live by these words. They are waking up as soon as the sun peeks through the blinds. And true morning people often arise before the sun peeks through the blinds. And they are full of energy, the perfect example of what rise and shine means. Quite often after Christmas, most people are in the post Christmas mood, taking down decorations, returning unwanted gifts, getting back to the grind of work, and so on. And the most awaited day of the year has come and gone. The joy of Christmas is packed away in a box with the rest of the decorations. A new year has begun, but we are still in the Christmas season. In light of Isaiah's prophecy to Israel, rise and shine, the celebration and joy of Christmas are just beginning for us, for Christians. The party is still going on because the light is come. However, social economics has conditioned our minds to move on to the next event. Valentine cards and heart-shaped boxes filled with candy are already on the store shelves. But we should take a moment to rest in God's present, God's gift to us. Rest for a moment in the hope that we have in Christ. Rest for a moment in God's presence instead of rushing into the next worldly attraction or distraction. On this Epiphany Sunday, we gather for worship and celebrate the Word becoming flesh, the arrival of the Christ child. Epiphany reminds us that this is the beginning of a new year, and it is far more than setting goals and making resolutions that we only keep for about a month. It's about revelation, specifically God's revelation to the world that the Savior has come, Jesus. So every day, we should experience the joy of Christmas because God's gift to the world is not trending for a season like the latest fashion crazes, tail far Chanel, coach bags, red bottoms, the late, latest gym shoes, the iPhones. Those things are only trending for a while. But God's gift never grows old. It never trends out. And it is a gift that keeps on giving. And because of God's gift to us today, we can sing from the depths of our hearts, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. We can sing from the depths of our hearts, joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. No more let sins and sorrows grow. He comes to make his blessings flow. So the visible presence of God has appeared to the world. And God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. In Christ, we have the blessing of redemption through his blood. We have forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace, new mercies every morning, and inheritance, and new life. But in the context of Isaiah 60, the prophet writes to the Jews returning to Jerusalem after the exile. The people of Israel suffered through the darkness of 70 years in Babylonian captivity. And when King Cyrus finally allowed them to return to their homeland, they found Jerusalem was in a mess. It lay in ruins. And instead of light and light, there was darkness and despair. Now I just want you to imagine for a moment how you would feel. 
feel after returning home from a long trip expecting to find your home as you left it, only to find it in shambles. And perhaps if we think about it in that context, we might have some idea of how Israel may have felt when they returned to Jerusalem. So the return to their homeland was not quite as glorious as they had imagined. But the time of Israel's redemption, redemption had finally come. A new day was dawning, dawning. God would turn their mourning into joy and give them gladness for their sorrows. You see, the, the Jews experienced dark days while in exile. And it seemed that God had abandoned them because for 70 years, the Lord was silent. But all of that was about to change. God sent Israel a new vision of hope through the prophet Isaiah when he said to the people, rise and shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And so although the present circumstances of Israel were still gloomy, they could rise, they could shine, despite their current situation because God would send a savior to rescue them. The God of reversal would turn things around. The sun would rise in Israel and set everywhere else. God would not only restore Jerusalem's previous glory, but God would bring the abundance of the sea, the wealth of the nations and the children of Israel that had been scattered back to this holy place. Israel will once again be the land of promise. Now, fast forward to today. Clearly, we live in a different time than the people Isaiah wrote to. But our world is still filled with evil and darkness, gloom, and despair. Trials and troubles come to disrupt our lives. So we, too, need to hear these words of encouragement from the prophet, words that he wrote to Israel. Those words apply to us today to rise and shine because the promised Redeemer has already come. Amen. And the sun, the S-O-N, is still shining on us despite our circumstances. God is among us. He is with us when we walk through the darkest valleys. Jesus is alive and he's present amid the chaos, illumined violence, disappointments. God is here, and God breaks through our shattered world as the sun shines, S-O-N, shine, And he illuminates the dark places and the confusion in our life. Christ can bring life and light to every dark place in our lives, every dark place. And those dark places may look different for each of us. But the same light shines in those places and brings light for all of us. But the darkness of sin continues to try and engulf us, but the Lord rises upon his children and God's glory appears over us. And through the birth of Jesus, God calls us to receive something to receive the gift of light and life. Because see, the Bible says that all who received him, who believed in him, and believed in his name, he gave the power to be children of God. So Jesus is our source of life. He is the source of light. And we should reveal that light to others. One of the ways that God breaks through our fractured world is through his children because they have the grace, the joy, and the hope that the world needs. They have experienced firsthand the love and forgiveness of God. And through the revelation of Christ, God calls us not only to receive something, but to do something, to walk in the light and live a life that worships our Savior. Let me share a couple of things with you about light. Light illuminates. When we walk into a room, whether it's day or night, the first thing we do is turn the light on. Right? Because the light helps one to see clearly. It clarifies and exposes. And see, that can be a problem 
for some people to expose it because in the Bible, darkness is a metaphor for sin and there are some things that some people would rather stay in. But the Bible says that we must confess our sin, ask for forgiveness and turn and follow a different path if we want to receive salvation. Jesus was born and revealed to the world to save us from our sin, to defeat darkness. Jesus only is the light that overcomes darkness. Light attracts. Christ came into the world to draw us nearer to God, to reconcile God's creation back to God, because God chose us before the foundation of the world. And so the good news of Epiphany is that Jesus didn't come only to bring life and light to Israel. He came for the rich, the poor, the broken, the oppressed, people from all nations and nationalities, all generations and walks of life. Jesus came to draw all people nearer to God, to shed the light of faith in the hearts of all people. So the light within us should cause unbelievers to desire the gift that God has given us, the gift of Jesus Christ. The light within us should attract people the way light bulbs attract moths. But in order to do that, we have to be authentic in our walk. The world is looking for authentic Christians. So we must be real in our walk, in our talk, in our worship. And when we do that, God will use us to draw unbelievers by his power. It's God that does the drawing. God adds to the church. We must yield ourselves to be instruments. Third, light radiates. The Greek word for radiance means a light flashing forth, a, a beam forth, a gleam. See, when something is radiant, it, it glows. It sends rays like, like the sun on fresh snow. We know how brilliant the light is when the sun is shining on fresh snow, almost so brilliant that we have to wear sunglasses. The light gleams. And so when God illuminates us, we can reflect God's light of radiance in, in powerful ways by giving our all to the one who gave his all for us. So what we have on the inside should radiate to the outside as the Holy Spirit shines through us. God came in the flesh and revealed himself to the world. And we have the privilege, and it is a privilege, church. We have the privilege to reflect the light of Christ that is in us. Oh, we don't need huge buildings thousands of members or dozens of programs to reflect the light of Christ, sometimes that can be a problem. We can have so many programs that we get so comfortable sitting in our building and in our seats. But God wants us to be uncomfortable, to let our light shine outside of these four walls so that others can see our good works and glorify God in heaven. But all God needs is willing hands and hearts that will allow God to work in us and through us to do the work that God has assigned to our hands. We are on a spiritual journey to follow the light just like the wise men followed that star to share that light, to worship the one who is the light of the world. And the light of God in us will illuminate, attract, and radiate. Epiphany is the day that Christ is revealed as the light, not just for Israel, but for you and for me and for all of the world. Your light has come. A Savior has been born. He is Christ the Lord. And that is a call for us, church, to rise and shine. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the church said, Amen. Amen.
Amen. Let us stand together as we affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the wicked. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Be seated. At this time, we're going to offer our joys and concerns in the congregation. The Bible says that we should rejoice together and we should also pray one for another and with this being the new year we're so grateful to see it <clears throat> know that should be the joy of every person in this place but at this time we're going to offer you to give you an opportunity to share your joys we have joys this morning i'd love to share the joy that uh, my mom and child had just received a second dose of the COVID uh, vaccine uh, by Sir, so I'm really happy. She got some side effects, but uh, overall she just got better. And so, yeah. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I have a joy on Sunday at the Sea 2022. And it's just each of you, and I pray that, you know, each of us will. Uh, Remember that we do have light and energies to shine with those around you <coughs> and, and offer your help and, and that we'll be able to bring more people to Christ in the <coughs> And I'm just happy to be here and I wish each of you a prosperous new year. Amen. in our sorrows, 
We know that we can cast all of those cares on you and for that, God, we say thank you. And God, as we enter into this new year, we thank you for that blessing as well. And may your light shine in our lives and guide our way that we may be led into your presence, that we would worship you. <clears throat> and we will worship the word made flesh, the Savior of the world, Mary's baby. And so God, draw near to us. Draw us ever close to you by the light of faith in our hearts. Give us grace to overcome all the obstacles that keep us far from you. Give us grace, Lord, to continue to hold on to you when it seems that there's nothing else to hold on to. But God, you are our life and our light. And in you there is no darkness. And so Lord, we ask that you would allow that light in us to illuminate, to attract, and radiate in a way that will glorify you now and always. It is in your Son's name that we pray. Amen.
lot to happen for others to be blessed through our giving. And we give you praise again right now. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. <coughs> Let us just pause for a moment on this first Sunday of the new year as we prepare to celebrate the great Thanksgiving and what God has done for us. Let's just pause in silence and remember the present that God has given us and that we are in the presence of God. So let's just give a moment in silence and rest in what God has done for us. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth, for you had formed the earth from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth light on the earth. You formed us into your image and breathed into us the breath of life when we turned away and our love failed. Your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God. And so we praise you. We glorify you. And so with all your people on earth and in, in, in heaven, we join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you. And blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. You sent a star to guide wise men to where Christ was born. And in your signs and witnesses in every age and throughout the world, you have led your people from far places to his light. By the baptism of his suffering death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by the water and the Spirit on the night in which he gave himself up for us. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Pour it out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a living and holy sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world body of Christ redeemed by his blood, by your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast together 
at his heavenly banquet through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church all honor and glory is yours almighty God now and forever amen and now as redeemed children of God let us pray together the Lord's Prayer our Father who art in heaven
prestige. Instead, pay attention to the ordinary, the quiet places, and in those places, share the gifts of love and light that God has so graciously shared with you. Amen. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy, be all glory, majesty, dominion, and power, now and forevermore.